Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be ranking all of my new-ish concealers for you guys from my least to my most favorite. So a lot of concealers in the last few months have come out. So I just want to talk about my experiences with the ones that I've tried and my thoughts. So if you like to hear that information, then just keep watching. <laughs> tried six concealers that have come out in the last few months. It takes me a really long time to get on board with a concealer. I feel like concealer can be very finicky just based on how you apply it, what products you pair it with, what powder you put on top of it, and all of that really dictate what happens with the concealer and how it acts. So for me when it comes to concealer I'm very picky and it does take a long time for me to come up with a true opinion. So that is why all of these concealers they're not brand brand new. They're just new within the last few months so it's taken me a while to get this video up for you guys because I've been testing these concealers I've been trying them with different products mixing them with different things so that I could bring you the most accurate information possible so we're gonna start off with number six my least favorite concealer now keep in mind this is just my least favorite of these six this concealer is not that bad but that is the elf hydrating at camo concealer this is the satin finish one they do have a regular one in their line which that one I am kind of just retrying out I bought it in a shade that was way way too light for me so I just recently bought a shade that matched me so I can kind of retest and reevaluate that concealer but I've been trying this I have mine in the shade medium sand which is a bit too dark for me but that's okay I wanted a bit of a darker concealer because I own so many really light concealers I needed something dark that I could mix with them but this concealer is just okay to me there are some major flaws with it I think for the most part I can get it to work but I really don't like the consistency of it I find it to be a bit thick and sticky to the point where it's actually difficult to blend the concealer out. So what I really prefer in concealers, I'll be honest with you guys, is a thinner consistency. I'm not huge on coverage. I do have discoloration under my eyes and slight darkness, but it's not anything I don't feel like a peach corrector can kind of solve. Coverage for me isn't the most important thing. Now this does have a medium to full coverage. It is a little bit buildable. However, the concealer is so thick that when you put on a second layer, it creases like crazy. So I don't really care for the consistency of it. It's sticky, so it doesn't really spread out that evenly or with ease. When I use my beauty blender, I just find myself struggling or having to put a little bit of extra time into it. The coverage is decent. The way it sits on the skin is nice. It doesn't emphasize texture. It is a hydrating concealer, but for me, it's just too thick and I find that it creases really, really bad. What I like to do to make this concealer work for me is I feel like it pairs very well with the regular concealer that they have in their line, so the regular 16-hour camo concealer. I use the brightening shade to just brighten this. It adds a little bit of extra coverage to this concealer as well. The regular 16-hour does have more coverage and it almost thins this out and makes this less sticky because it adds more mattifying properties. So this alone I don't really like but I do like mixing this with a more liquidy concealer or a lightweight concealer and something mattifying as well just to get rid of that stickiness. So on its own have not been a very big fan of this but it's not bad. It wears okay throughout the day if you can get over the creasing. So number five this may surprise you but I really I can't get on board with this concealer and that is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I have mine in the shade fun. I really do like this shade on me. I wanted to like this so bad but from the reviews that I've seen it seems as if this is a you either love it or you hate it kind of concealer. I'll be honest I'm kind of on the hate it spectrum. Hate is a strong word. There are redeeming qualities to this concealer. I like how much coverage you can get from this. This is a full coverage concealer so for those of you who are concerned about darkness or discoloration this is a great concealer. However it is a bit too thick for me as well. I just hate thick concealers. For this this product a little goes a long way with this. It's going to work best for you when you apply a very small amount. It's not horrible, but one thing that puts me off of concealers is I have very minor texture underneath my eyes and like down here. And it's very rare for a concealer to emphasize that, but there are some concealers that emphasize that <laughs> little bit of texture and this is one of those that does that. There's not very many out there but I know Tarte Shape Tape emphasizes the texture under my eyes and this does as well and for me instantly that put this on my hit list because it shows the texture under my eye that literally barely exists. It's a bit too thick for me and it creases pretty bad. I don't know. I just can't get this to work for me. I think this works better on the face for me personally. I've used it to cover some blemishes and it works just fine for that. I also have been given some 
some tips to use my fingers and try some different ways to apply it. So I will be doing that, but I just, I don't like this. I don't like the way that it sits on my skin. The only kind of redeeming quality to it is the coverage is great. So now let's move on to number four. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer. I have mine in the shade C5. If I could have it my way, this would be literally just one shade darker, okay? I have this on underneath alone. So in the demo, I actually mixed these two together, but I was struggling with some black eyeshadow after I filmed that and it got stuck on my face. So I had to take my makeup all off and I just reapplied with this one alone. This one started off in very last place, but I did switch it because I really like the way that this sits on my skin. This is more of a demi matte finish and it spreads really well. It's very nice thin consistency. It doesn't emphasize my texture and just this shade in general, it does a great job brightening. But what I don't like about this concealer is as the day goes on, the coverage fades away. Within 20 minutes, you could definitely see some darkness popping through. And like I said, darkness isn't my major concern. So the fact that that's kind of coming through, I'm like, who? Huh? That's nothing that a like peach under eye corrector can't fix. I just did it today to kind of show you if you could see there's a little bit right here especially of darkness coming through so if you have darkness issues or discoloration you're going to hate this concealer it's not good however for me I really like the smoothing finish that this has I find that even when I put it in the center of my forehead there's a patch of really smooth skin wherever I apply this so though this is smoothing and the consistency is great the coverage is god-awful so this basically has the complete opposite problems of the hourglass concealer so for this for me to make it work all I I need is a little bit of a peach under eye corrector and I do enjoy it quite a lot. Purchase at your own risk. I think it depends on what your needs are but if darkness isn't your major concern this is actually very very smoothing under the eye and it's not overly hydrating either. I wouldn't call it a hydrating concealer. It actually is more of a matte concealer but it's not drying. So let's move on to number three. I think this is the newest concealer that I have here and this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I have mine in the shade 4.5. I really like the shade. This was a good shade for me. I really like this concealer because Luminous Silk Foundation is one of my favorite foundations. One thing that I always complain about with Luminous Silk is I really felt like it wasn't that luminous. It was more demi matte on me. This is a luminous concealer. Of course when you set it down the luminosity goes away but this is a really, really lightweight concealer, very liquidy of a consistency. So if you don't like lightweight concealers, you're not going to like this one. It doesn't have very much coverage either. It's a light to medium concealer. Like I said, for me, a little bit of peach corrector and I'm good. But I really like this concealer to mix with tinted moisturizers or any type of lightweight like coverage foundations that you have. I think that this pairs very well with the Pat McGrath foundation, with any type of tinted moisturizer. That's when I would use this. A lot of people think that full coverage concealer is going to counteract like light coverage foundation. For me, I ju that just doesn't make sense. I feel like if you're going to use a lightweight foundation, you also need a lightweight concealer. As your face makeup fades throughout the day, if that full coverage concealer shows, you look weird. Like just white under eyes and the rest of your face is fading away like coverage. It just looks imbalanced to me. So the best way to balance that is to pair this with a lightweight foundation. And I love that. So I can see a lot of people not liking this concealer. But for me, I like a lightweight concealer and I think this is awesome. And because it is so lightweight and hydrating, it doesn't really go into your fine lines. And even if it does go into your fine lines, it's so light of a consistency that it's not really deep at all. You really can't tell. So the only thing that this is lacking is coverage, but it sits beautiful, it's hydrating, and I really like it. I feel like with concealers, it's give or take less coverage, but it sits beautifully on the skin. Let's move on to number two. That is the Dior Forever Skin Corrector. I have mine in the shade to end. This is also a really good concealer. This is like a middle of the road concealer as far as it's not matte but it's not dewy it's not full coverage but it's not light coverage it can be used for an under eye concealer or just a regular skin corrector it's a really well rounded concealer it took me a little bit of time to jump on the bandwagon for this i wasn't too sure because this does crease it's not as creasy as the hourglass i don't know it's just right in the middle but i've learned to actually really like that and appreciate its versatility coverage wise this is definitely 
definitely a medium coverage. It's not full coverage like the Hourglass, but it definitely has more coverage than let's say the Armani. What I really like about this is on the face though. I feel like it does a fabulous job covering blemishes or if you just want a really light everyday quick evening of the skin, just put a couple stripes of this on your face and blend it out with a sponge. This does a really good job. And what I think is really unique about this concealer is when you put it over a blemish and you blend it out, it still holds that coverage. Even today when I was using like the hourglass for coverage, it kind of blended away and you could really see the red poking through of my blemishes. Whenever I put this on top, the coverage actually stays. So this does a really good job of that. That's very rare to find in a concealer. I mean, it's just a good concealer. It works well. It's not drying. It has a decent coverage. This is a great everyday reliable concealer. I do highly, highly recommend it. And let's move on to my number one favorite concealer. This should be of no surprise to you. I have not held back on my thoughts about this concealer, but the Pat McGrath concealer is so good. This is called the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. This is in shade LM9. I did just order a darker shade so that I can use it for spot concealing as well. This is another concealer that really holds its coverage even when you put it over a blemish and blend it out. It covers it. This is more full coverage than the Dior. It's not as much coverage as the Hourglass, but you get a lot of coverage with this. I would definitely consider this to be full coverage. It's very smoothing on the skin. It is a little bit more of a thick consistency, but unlike the e.l.f., it actually still spreads out evenly and with ease. It also is a very smoothing concealer as well, and what and it doesn't crease either for how thick it is. I'm very surprised. So overall, this is one of my favorite concealers in my entire collection. It just does everything that I want. And I think that so many people are going to love this because it does have that coverage. It does have that hydration. It doesn't crease. It just does everything that a concealer should do. This is one of the best formulas that you can pick up from a concealer. So I really do like this. Just be aware, full coverage, lots of coverage. A little bit more on the thick side as well. Amazing concealer, number one, best concealer by far out of this group. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I definitely spent a lot of time testing these concealers out so that I could give you the most accurate information that I could. It was pretty easy to rank them as well because I knew which ones I didn't like. I knew which ones I did like. And I feel like there's a really great variety here. Many different types of concealers here. Thick and full coverage, thin and light coverage, hydrating, mattifying, just a lot of variety has come out as far as concealers recently. And I found some favorites as well out of all of these releases so that's really exciting so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful let me know your thoughts down below about the concealers and about how i rank them if you aren't subscribed to my channel i hope you guys take the time to do so and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one